Diorama time! Roll the intro! Hey, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Professor C from the MGP Hobbyist and I'm back at it again with another video. So this time, I'll be teaching you guys how to make firewalls so as you can see here I have two kinds of firewalls I have one compact one which I use for tabletop gaming and a curved one which I use for uh, some dioramas that I make although they don't look as realistic as you may want them to be but uh, they work especially for school projects and uh, tabletop gaming so RPG gaming so, yeah. So the stuff you need to have in making a diorama would be a clear jar or a clear glass case like uh, the cover of a, the glass of a picture frame or an old clock. You would need that. You would need clear paints. So one clear orange, clear yellow, and clear red. Of course, when you have paint, you need brushes. There you go. And after the brushes, we need, of course, glue sticks and glue gun to make the effects. And we need this a heat resistant flat surface. Okay, to make fire effects, all you have to do is get your glue gun force plug it in, turn it on, wait for it to heat up, and get your jar or your glass or your uh, picture, picture frame glass. So what you have to do is uh, you have to draw the shape of the flames and make sure it's as rugged as it can be so that it would look more natural. So if you're not confident in drawing, you can get a piece of paper, tape it inside here, and then use it as your tracing pattern. So make sure that you cut the paper as wide as you want and make sure you segregate it, uh, separate it with lines. So you have one small one and one big one to use. And then what you have to do is you have to make sure that the glue dries completely. So if you're using a curved surface like this, um, if you let it dry, for like around 10 to 15 minutes the glue would stay flat it would follow the shape but if you leave it for longer let's say um, you leave it for two hours three hours there is some tendency that the glue will take on the shape so just like this you see this is curved um, I left this for an hour or so so yeah when I peeled it off it was curved unlike this this is fairly flat because I only dried this for like 20 minutes. Okay, so I think, oh, yeah, we have melt now. So you just pick the surface, you draw the shape of your fire. Make sure that you make it so as if it is varying in size. Okay, so you have the basic outline and fill it up now make it as rough as possible and as tight as possible to avoid gaps on the effect so it's easier to paint the more rugged the better actually in my opinion because then again if you look at it it's gonna look way better you make sure you give it a flat bottom so yeah let's pull that up don't worry if it's a little weird looking at first it's part of it so now we have that one also don't worry about this kind of uh oh stick to my fingers so that's okay it gives it more uh texture don't worry about that you can always cut that off 
also before I forget you have to have scissors in the post processing of course so let's move some of the frame here so that is one fire I want and then we can have something that is similarly why does this one but a lot longer let's make it up to here Then you are drawing using the blue button. So I'm running out of blue. I'm gonna get my camera glue gun. Glue stick rather. So the thing about glue sticks is that uh, they're fairly easy to use. So you can outline. Then you're drawing with the glue gun. Also guys, don't worry about having a lot of uh, imperfections like this, I have one here. Also there's another technique where you can layer it, so you have to wait for it to dry like this. Um, this is dry. Okay, so layering is like you fill in the gaps of the previous layer make sure that everything is sealed and we want to avoid uh, having gaps on the effect as much as possible so we would be dealing with the gaps on this uh, technique layering so after you've done this we wait for it to dry up we move to painting when it's dried, you can peel it off gently, of course. This make sure to be careful, cause uh, again, we will never know when it would have holes. Okay, so that's good. So it's relatively flat. And this one, so be careful. With <laughs> I think we can um, use that to our advantage. It makes it more look, uh, real, realistic per se. <laughs> Quote unquote realistic. Okay, so that's it. So we have to clean this up with scissors first. Uh, remove the excess before we start painting. Okay, so now they are relatively clean. What we have to do is now we paint them. So pick the side that is bumpy because the other side is always flat, of course, because it touched the surface. So we pick the bumpy side and get a piece of paper, any paper you can paint on. So that one here. Make sure you have clear yellow, orange, and red paint. So I'm using. Um, the mia paint so what we have to do is get our piece so let's take this one first we start off with the yellow make sure you give it a good shake of course try to zoom in the process there we go of course once you give it a good shake make sure to cover most of the piece with yellow the bottom part so around two-thirds of the way there you don't have to paint them uh, completely so if you want to add effects you can leave the other parts clear that's what, that's what I do a lot of times bottom third two thirds of the piece with yellow paint and so you would need a lot of yellow paint to do this there you go once you have that 
we take the red and paint the tips. So I'm using Tamiya Clear Red, so give it a shake as well. Sure. I forget to close the paint. It's gonna be a waste if you don't close it. Okay, so get this. Okay, so using the other brush, you paint the tips with red. So this is the tips. You don't have to paint every single tip. Just make sure you paint the one sticking out. Yeah, I'm not on my fingers. Paint the ones sticking out. Make sure you've coated them properly. There you go. So now we have painted the tips. Make sure you go over them properly because doing another layer would uh, erase them. So now we have that. Then we move to close this one using the orange paint. Okay. Orange paint. So the orange paint I'm using to me as well. So what I do here is you have to make sure that the orange paint uh makes the two colors blend seamlessly so it's, it's gonna be your trans transition color from the yellow to red so yeah there you go what you do, your task to do is to make sure that the colors yellow and red melt smoothly as if they came their the color is transitioning so sometimes you might want to paint over the red and yellow with the orange a little to make it seem to have that effect so you end up with something like this there you go so you have the depth of uh, you have yellow going darker to orange and going to red so just wait for it to dry and we do the final assembly okay so we have the paint dry so what we have to do now is get our flat surface so I'm using a Tupperware cover which is heat resistant so you have to make lines that match the size or the width of your uh, fire effect so me personally I would uh, put it on a curve like this instead of putting it flat like this or a straight line like this so yeah so make sure that you are measuring it properly I would curve it first there you go Let's curve it to the desired shape and make sure that when you put in the glue you have around half an a half a centimeter on both sides to give way to the stand so also when putting them you have to offset one another you have to offset each from the other rather so that it would give off the effect that it has volume so a little more and there you go Make sure you go over the sides as well to make sure that it sticks. Now it's working. So yeah. Make sure 
that you have covered everything. The perimeter of the effect. So there it's slightly curved. And I'll put the other one sort of around right here. So offset it. Make sure when you offset it. It's not that far from the first piece. So again, oh no 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 no. Make sure to put the glue around the perimeter so that uh, it wouldn't melt. Uh, it wouldn't melt. It wouldn't move around much. There you go. So make sure. Also make sure that the connection between the two, like in between the two effects, the parts rather, is a little thick so that it would be easier, well, it would make it look as if it's close together and it's for structure, it, it would support the effect parts when you remove it from the surface it will break let's just wait for it to dry and we'll do the final painting so after that it dries you would see you have a base that is white so you have to paint it over with yellow so we put it back on the paper of course and start painting make sure you get all the exposed uh, parts painted so you wouldn't waste enough oh you wouldn't waste paint you would just have enough don't paint the ones that aren't seen much so this I'll paint this side because it's fairly exposed okay all the insides are there some spaces You can highlight it with some orange paint if you want or black paint to simulate that something is burning beneath it. But, uh, that would be another application of this. So that's about it for that. If you have it painted, it would look something like this. So that's not the only thing you can do with uh, hot glue. For effects, you can actually make something like this one. So this is a Super Saiyan aura I made. So I incorporated some of the flame effects, but this time I made it uh, curved slightly to one side, this two to the other side. And uh, the thing here is I spray painted this with silver paint first, just a very very thin thin amount so that it would look shinier. And then I painted it after it dried out. So yeah, we have here Super Saiyan Aura. We have flames of different sizes. So that's it. so with that I would love you guys to comment down below some of the links to some of the photos if you, you know, make one of these using the technique I showed you. I want to see them, I want to appreciate them all. And uh, with that, I hope you learned something and see you again next video. Bye-bye.